in some ways, this course, it's like a series of point-to-point -point races, more than it is a traditional ocean race. I mean, really, you're never going for more than two to four hours before there's some sort of significant change. You know, you're going behind an island, you're making a turn, you're putting up a different sail. Um, so, in that respect, it's a harder race because there's more changes. It's a very challenging race physically, it's a very challenging race mentally because it's, uh, right now our router has us doing it in one day in 21 hours. So I can't imagine that there's a lot of sleep in that period of time. You know, I think there's 13 corners that we have to do in the race. If you don't optimize all the, the maneuver, you lose a lot of, of time against the other boats. So I think it's one of the key of the race. Good maneuver, good running mark, and uh, all the time focus on the next next one. To be honest, um, I don't have any expectations. I think it will be a rough race because of all the um, different legs we have and all the different islands. So it's sportive sailing. So um, I expect that. Yeah. Sleep managing will be uh, will be a big point, but uh, there's a few legs uh, in the, this course where where either of our can sleep. I think in some ways the sea state in this race is tougher than in most uh, traditional ocean races. It's a sprint, so you know you have to push very, very hard um, and we have to sail the boat well. And you know, you're sailing around the Caribbean and so how can you, uh, how can you not smile? So the uh, person I'm doing the 600 with is my brother, Young. We've sailed a lot together in Holland on his quarter tonner. When we sail together, it's just pure fun and excitement. And uh, so for me being able to invite him to come and do with this race together on Cavalier Vane is a, a dream come true. Tez is a special boat. The owner and his daughter are on board and they're from here. Uh, we have an Israeli guy. Uh, a guy from America and four Dutchies, so it's a special boat. <laughs> you know, this racetrack is not a not a friendly track if you uh, don't respect it. Some of our competitors, you know, they're with a broken mast in training, and then sort of having issues pulling stuff out of the inside of their boat, and then you know, Argo capsizing yesterday. So we was uh, in the back of uh, Argo and. Uh, uh, we want. Um, we had uh, still the Jenaker up, but uh, then the, the wind pick up, and it was time to close the wind. So we close the Jenaker, and, uh, and then we see them uh, right there uh, capsize. We we didn't understand what happened to them. It was uh, quite some uh, quite some experience. We were probably a little bit higher than we could have been for the. Uh, for the wind that was coming and uh, oh. we used to travel the main sheet super fast as the bow went uh, just sort of dipped but um, that wasn't enough I think the foil probably once you yeah. get down to a certain angle then the foil probably works in reverse and is then sucking you down more and once the front beam then hits the water then the rudders come out so you've lost steerage and we, um, we sort of went very very slowly to 90 degrees it was less than two seconds uh, the bow was going in to when we knew the boat was going to go. It was not going to come back. I back. tried to make it into the boat. Um, I got onto the side of the, of the pod and uh, that's when the boat started to go more bows up. Uh, so I had quite a long fall hitting the boom along the way to the water. Uh, I ended up pretty far from the boat and had to kind of grab the last piece of rope I could find. Um, the rest of the guys were sort of um, arranged on the lifelines um, and just kind of just kind of hovering and waiting for the boat to do what it was going to do. But I had a bit of a uh, had to pull myself kind of uh, back in. And so we're happy that we're that we're safe. Uh, you know, we're not going to make an irresponsible decision just to race. We're going to go if the boat's safe and, and close to 100%. So long day tomorrow uh, figuring that out. But you know, we're still we're still fighting on and still want to uh, still want to do it. Well, I think we all we all learned a lesson on how uh, how powerful this boat is. Quite miraculous. I'm not sure, Brian, if you know if a, if a big multi has has gone and not broken the rig. I think that's that's if it's not a first, it's pretty it's pretty uh, unique. Yeah. So we're very I lucky in that regard. 
we decided earlier today that we that we will try. There's a, there's a big list uh, replacing electronics, uh, getting the engine uh, to run. Uh, we have some repairs to do uh, on the mast. All of the, all of these things need to come together. Yeah, just excited to get back in the race, get the boat fixed, and uh, keep everyone excited about the uh, 600 and the boats going around. Well, yeah, Seba was um, the scene of the crime for us last year on the Fujin. We just had a strong puff from the wrong direction and we didn't react accordingly. You know, one minute we're sailing along and the next minute we're upside down. So um, we really don't have a lot of time to think. So right now our router has us going in, in an hour, uh, one day and 21 hours, which is quite you know, that's quite quick. Um, there's a lot of things that have to happen for that to um, really hold true. For Bellamente, we have, you know, obviously the goal is we wanna, we wanna win the event, but we wanna be smart with our gear. Um, we wanna learn how to sailor. Um, but you know, the other day we were, we were triple headed with a reef in the main doing 29 knots. And uh, how can you not think of anything but wow? Cause it's just, a, it's an awesome, awesome boat. Well, I did as well a couple of years ago on a similar sized boat as this. It's, it's just that the, the power and the, and the forces that are on these boats is always that balance you have to find. How hard can you push it? Well, it looks like the forecast is a little lighter than last year. Said that, if you look at last year, even like I think they had a period that was 40 knots. It, it's not that much. Uh, it, it's, of course, it's a lot of breeze, but I think it's just a, a matter of a lot of people don't have enough experience in that, in that kind of conditions. And, and I think that is still always one of the things, especially about a race like this. It, it looks all very easy sailing in the Caribbean. It's nice and warm, but if it starts blowing, then normally people don't go out sailing. And that is, and I think that is probably the, the biggest minus points of a lot of boats. When it's blowing harder than 25 knots, most of the people prefer to stay on the dock. I'm looking forward the most in this race to the night, um, because the night, I think you can make a lot of gains on the other boats because people get tired. Uh, and because of uh, the mornings, because every, every rough night there is a beautiful morning. Uh, the big challenges in the 600 for Cabali Vane will be the upwind legs. The forecast in general uh, is suiting my boat, so looking forward to it. Well, I think we're actually more prepared than we've ever been for, for any race. We have a, a really top crew, probably the best crew that we've ever had on the boat. You know, the last time we were here, um, it went quite well for us and so we have a standard that we have to uphold. Most important in this race, uh, it's, you know, the trades are tough. You know, it blows 15 to 20 day and night. And uh, I think people forget how, how hard it is. The seas out there, you know, they're, they're big. And, uh, and we've seen in practice that uh, boats have broken masts, some boats haven't made it here. Um, and uh, one boat capsized, the trimaran capsized, and we're hoping they're gonna be back on the water tomorrow. And they're really working hard and fingers crossed that they make it. It would be a great story. But, you know, the, the old adage about to finish first, you first have to finish, applies here in spades because it's a tough race course. Uh, it's demanding on the navigators, demanding on the crew. And, uh, and it's one where you have to get around safely, uh, but also push the boat and the crew as hard as you can. So it's, it's, it's incredibly demanding and I think people love it. That's why they keep coming back and, uh, and, and it's a huge challenge. It's, it's one of those that people love to take off and say, I've done it, I've completed it and, uh, and they enjoy it for sure. What we're going to see tomorrow is, you know, the, the conditions are going to be about 15 to 20 knots. It'll be partial sunshine. It will be sublime conditions, warm water, sunshine, blue, I mean, it, it's every sailor's dream uh, that these conditions that we, we, we have here. Um, there are no marks of the course, or there's one mark of the course, all the rest of them are islands. And you know, I, I just, I, I'll be quite sad when I see them going off, waving them goodbye and wish I was there with them. Um, but we, as the Royal Ocean Racing Club, have an important race to run. Uh, it's, um, it's special, the quality of the fleet, the diversity of the fleet, um, and we hope that they get round the course safely and uh, yeah, wish them all the best and uh, we will look forward to welcoming them back during the week.